Hope you all are having a wonderful day. I got some Baldur's Gate 3 news today about some upcoming events, and I'm also going to go over a few Twitter posts that many of you probably missed with some new cool stuff in it. But first, a quick recap of the most recent news. So Baldur's Gate 3 has been officially announced to release on August 31st of this year, 2023. And those of you that have already or are going to pre-order the game, whether you play early access or not is irrelevant, will be able to start your official run 72 hours earlier than the release time on August 31st. And this is going to have a limit of not being able to progress past Act 1 until it actually comes out on the 31st. I actually like the way that Larian is going about this as they're not charging, you know, $20 more for you to play the game early like Blizzard does with their games. In fact, Larian may technically even be charging you less if you're actually someone who was going to purchase Baldur's Gate 3's Digital Deluxe Edition, because if you buy or you've already bought BG3 anytime before its official release, you get a free upgrade to the Digital Deluxe Edition, which is a $10 value. And I also appreciate that Larian is limiting the 72 hour head start to only act one, as this will prevent a lot of spoilers from floating around for those players that want to wait until the 31st to actually play. Now, please do keep in mind that even though Larian did announce this, I know for a fact that they're still ironing out the details of the game's launch. I'll keep you guys all updated right here on this channel. Also somewhat recent important news is that Baldur's Gate 3 was announced to be releasing on the PS5 alongside PC, which includes Mac. But at this time, Larian is not able to comment on an Xbox release or not able to announce it yet as they're currently having troubles working with the Series S. And the Series S has actually been known to create quite the problems for many modern day developers. Hopefully we get an Xbox announcement soon, but you might actually want to direct your frustration towards Microsoft who, and don't quote me on this, I think Microsoft actually requires that all new Xbox Series X games have to release on the Series S as well. You know, I think it's great that there's a more affordable, somewhat modern Xbox system like the Series S, but at the same time, I've seen quite a lot of developers complaining about Xbox Series S support. And if the lack of support also stops games from coming to Xbox, period, that's a bit of a problem, and I wouldn't be too happy if I was an Xbox player in general. Okay, moving on to news about upcoming news, starting with the Summer Game Fest, which is hosted by Jeff Keighley, who has quite a close relationship to Larian Studios these days. And Larian Studios will be making an appearance, or Baldur's Gate 3 will be featured, should I say, I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do, at the Summer Game Fest. And actually, if we go over to their website, you can see Larian's logo floating around here, which is pretty cool. So I would expect a new Baldur's Gate 3 trailer at the very least, and probably a ton of Baldur's Gate 3 news. The Summer Game Fest starts on June 8th at 3 p.m. Eastern, and it's going to be streaming on all major platforms, but I'll probably also be streaming it right here on this channel if you'd like to hang out with this community. To make things even better, a few days later, we have the PC Gamer Show, which is going to be on June 11th at 4 p.m. Eastern and Larian Studios retweeted PC Gamer with the eye emojis here, letting us know that they should be making an appearance at this show as well. So this is quite exciting. Uh, PC Gamer Show and also Summer Game Fest are two of the biggest shows in the industry. And considering that Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be only like two and a half months away from release at this time, this is Larian's prime time for marketing. So I'm expecting it to be really good. I'm expecting, you know, an official game launch trailer that we haven't seen before. Perhaps something on Xbox, give us a little update there, not entirely sure. And those of you guys that watched their most recent announcement where they released the PS5 stuff and that trailer that told us about one of the game's lesser antagonists, after that, Larian told us that they're going to reveal two more of the game's antagonists to us before the game releases. So I'm assuming that they're probably going to reveal maybe one of these at the first event here, the Summer Game Fest, maybe the second one at the PC gaming show, or they're just going to do one for both shows and then like a month before the game actually comes out, reveal another one. Now that's definitely getting into the spoilery territory. And I'm of course going to report on all of this and talk about it and analyze it, but I'll be sure to leave spoiler warnings if I feel like any of this stuff is kind of encroaching into that no-go zone that some of you guys don't want to enter into. But regardless, we have a lot coming our way in the month of June. How different the Summer Game Fest is from the PC Gamer Show, 
Not entirely sure. I'd imagine they'll at least be a little bit different. Would we get two trailers? I don't know. But I should also point out that the Xbox Game Showcase is on June 11th, the same day as the PC Gamer Show. So maybe if Larian was going to announce something on Xbox, that would be the day that they actually do it. And as promised, let's go over a few of the tweets that you may have missed, some of which contain some new exciting information. The first one dealing with the Barbarian class. So on April 26th, Larian Studios tweeted, Barbarian claims, I have the Honey Badger on my side. Hit level six as a Wild Heart Barbarian and claim the Honey Badger aspect for automatic rage if you're poisoned or charmed. Now let me go ahead and maximize and play a bit of this video. We have the Larian Gazette here reporting on an incident. Battle-hardened barbarians have been spotted frolicking in fields, rolling in flowers, and stealing honey, according to local barkeepers who are now appealing to the Flaming Fist to step in. A town mercenary is said to be struggling to contain the situation, as they seem impervious to conventional methods of restraint. Claiming to possess the spirit of a honey badger, and I can't really make out what the rest says, on the top right, with a honey badger possessed barbarian, he demanded honey and then charged straight at us, wielding nothing but a spoon. At first I thought he was crazy, but then I realized he was just following his honey badger instincts. Thus far, city officials have asked only that barbarians clean up after themselves and stop leaving half drunk bottles. Dot dot dot. And the next scene, we get to witness a honey badger barbarian. Raging after being poisoned or charmed and this says reach level six as a wild heart barbarian And the other subclass that we currently have access to is the berserker subclass and the wild heart is essentially The totem warrior barbarian with some variants larian has changed a few things And we even get a glimpse of some in-game footage here when you reach level six as a wild heart barbarian You can see that you get to choose one passive out of this long list a list of aspects of the beast now the only one that we can actually see here is the honey badger but i'm assuming that probably tiger eagle elk bear and wolf are probably on this list too considering that they're part of the wild heart subclass but larian has it all blurred out looks like there's a few other animals in there too it'll be really interesting to see what they are and what their actual passive benefits are this makes me kind of excited to uh, to play a Wild Heart Barbarian. Then we get two more quick scenes. One of them actually reveals some new information. And that is this one right here. You can see the Barbarian raging after being charmed, poisoned, or frightened. They didn't say frightened in the actual uh, tweet. So that's pretty good because there's a lot of enemies, especially in early access, that can frighten you. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is like a free rage that doesn't count against the amount of rages that you get per long rest. I'm leaning towards it being a free rage. Maybe it doesn't last as long because if it's not a free rage, then people can proc your rage when you might not necessarily want it to proc. If someone throws poison at you, charms or frightens you, and therefore it might not even be that great. So we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. Now this tweet I should have brought up earlier in the more news section of the video, but this tweet is telling us that the Baldur's Gate 3 origin characters are coming to the game that's called Idol Champions. And actually, I don't really know hardly anything about this game. It's a free to play game. It's available on Steam, mostly positive reviews. And you guys can see some of the screenshots right here. And the BG3 origin character, oh, you can see Minsk right there. The BG3 origin characters will be coming to this game. So yeah, if you know anything about this game or you play it, I guess that would be pretty exciting. Now, while I have you guys here on Steam, I also want to bring up a screenshot that escaped my attention. I only saw recently and that is this screenshot right here at first glance you might think it's you know the blighted village or moonhaven village with the windmill in the back right here but if you look closely actually let me bring over my program so we can zoom in a little bit if you look closely we have a really nice well put together building right here so it's clearly not the blighted village um, and then down here we actually have a billboard I'm not really sure what that means. If somebody knows, please let me know. It looks, I don't know if they're advertising some carnival or something like that. It'd be pretty cool if it was the carnival outside of Nashgal. And then this right here is actually a symbol that represents Baldur's Gate, this ship right here. There's also a building right above right here that has some type of bird representing its entrance. No idea what that is. Now, I will say there is a windmill in the town of Nashgal, and this could be the manor house right here, but there's probably a 0.001% chance that that is actually true. Uh, I 
It's got to be somewhere near the city of Baldur's Gate. We have more symbols of Baldur's Gate right here, the ship right here. That's the icon for Baldur's Gate on these flags right here. I just have no idea where it would actually be. It looks a little bit too fancy for the outer city, but who knows? There's a few more Larian Gazette tweets, but nothing really revealing anything new, although I will quickly show you this one. We have a tiefling that throws a fish at a spectator some people thought that this was the ultimate reveal of the beholder but it only has four eye stalks so it's a spectator although i will point out that the spectator does appear to be reworked a little bit from the models that we have actually seen and the tiefling throws the fish and kills the spectator now obviously that's kind of silly and not very realistic but i think it's cool that larian has like these little bits of comedy and funny things that you can do in the game but it's not really forced so like if you're optimizing your combat encounter you're not throwing fish at spectators you're only doing that if you intentionally want to have a funny moment and you have a creature down to like one hp then you would attempt something like that you certainly don't have to do it if you don't want to larian has also been tweeting out these creature codex cards and right here we have the warg which is a monstrosity that feeds on dwarves or their favorite food is dwarves they have a bad attitude and hate vacuum cleaners then we have the mind flayers which are aberrations lawful evil their tentacles are well oiled and their diet is brains and if you want to learn more about mind flayers my recent sunday lore series video focused on mind flayers and then the Creature Codex card for the Spectator, which are Aberrations, Lawful Neutral. Their pickup line is a complex series of winks ending in a silent and impenetrable stare, and their passive ability is Dark Vision. And that'll be it for this video. Really, the main thing that I wanted to get out was that we have the upcoming Summer Game Fest on June 8th at 3 p.m. Eastern, and also the PC Gamer Show on June 11th at 4 p.m. Eastern, where we're going to get some Baldur's Gate 3 news and most likely a trailer. As always, I put chapter markers in pretty much all of my videos, so if you're not interested in all the content that I do in one video, you guys can skip around to different parts. I'm not sure if everybody was interested in me going over all their extra Twitter posts, but I thought that was pretty cool, so I did it anyway. So I'll catch you guys on the next one.